first of all, I have to tell you, this synod is a, a window open, as John the 23rd said for the Vatican II. A window of hope, a window of, of course, faith, but especially for these pastoral attitudes that are necessary more now than ever. Welcome to the Paul VI Audience Hall, the famous hall where the Pope has big meetings with all these different groups of people, especially in the winter time when it's a little bit too cold in St. Peter's Square to hold those great events. Come on inside, let's check it out. This is the famous area where the coffee breaks occur. So in the morning sessions of the Synod of Bishops, all the bishops come downstairs, they meet here, they have sandwiches, and most importantly, they get a chance to speak to each other informally. Uh, a lot of uh, very important business and conversations happen exactly here, uh, around coffee and around a little dolce. Now let's go upstairs and take a look at where the Synod Fathers were, will actually meet to discuss these very important topics of the family. Come on, let's take a look. Our good friend Cardinal Tagle right here checking into the Synod of Bishops. I'll just say hello really quickly. Cardinal Tagle, yes. Sebastian from Salt oh, and Light. Yes. How so are I, you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm good doing to very well. It's very good to see you. Wow. How was your trip? Uh, it's okay. Good, okay. good, good. Yeah, good. A little tired. Cardinal Tagle, he's going to be one of those three who actually regulates the conversations on some of the days during the Synod of Bishops. So, this is an example of one of the rooms where the small language groups will meet. We see very important, a little chapel here for the Synod Fathers. Go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, this is the hall itself. This is where it all happens. This is where the presidents sit every day. Uh, if we take another step up here to the highest chair, the chair with the armrests, is for the Holy Father himself, Pope Francis. He'll be sitting here. He will be overseeing every session of the Synod, and he has made very clear that he wants to come and listen to what everybody has to say. This is the place from where he will listen to everything. So as you can see, this is the Synod Hall. This is where all the action will take place for the first week and also throughout the two weeks of the Synod of Bishops. It's also the place where the, the bishops will meet next year for the Ordinary Synod, which will be the conclusion, the great conclusion of the Synod of Bishops on the challenges to family life in the world today. It's very interesting that both Pope John Paul and Pope Francis chose the family as the theme of their first synod. Uh, I believe that comes from probably their experience as diocesan bishops, which they've, they've grappled with, uh, the fa knowing the fact that the formation of the faith, the transmission of the faith, has to take place in families. Well, the family is the thing, the element, that would bring stability into society. The Pope himself decided to intervene and give a, an address. He told the story about uh, the February 2014 consistory of cardinals, where Cardinal Casper gave an address about family life, and there were a number of responses. And he recalled that one of his cardinals had told him that some other cardinals were afraid to really speak their minds because in the presence of the Pope they were not sure how that would be interpreted. The Pope said today that this is not synodality. This is not what he wants. He wants an open and honest conversation but always in a very charitable way, in a very charitable atmosphere. I may have my own personal opinion about one point of the family but how does the church as a whole respond to it? Uh, so I think the Holy Father is the special attention on that word, synodality, makes a big difference. I'm happy to bring here uh, our, our uh, challenges from the Middle East, our situation in the Holy Land, in all the Middle East. Often I said that we are a church of Calvary, that's right. And for sure the families are, 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 are suffering with us from this situation. I'm conveying the voice of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church which is suffering right now in the very critical situation. In the moment when uh, your world is falling apart, a family is your last defense. The Synod of Bishops is a place where different voices can be heard, but this, the first synod under Pope Francis, was also about a much needed reform of the synod structure itself. Synods have been around for 50 years. What has been lacking 
in the last 50 years that, that there's a desire for, for more in the synods. Well, uh, there was no real communication often in the synods. It was too formalistic with the speeches to listen from the morning to the uh, evening to, spe uh, to speeches of five minutes. It's uh, boring. And therefore, the Pope wants more communication within the synod. Considering some of those changes that might happen, what would you like to see? You've been at many synods before. What would you like to see? I, I've been at many synods, and these sort of meetings are intrinsically unsatisfactory. <laughs> uh, and that is why uh, such synods have not been the norm in most periods of church history, because they're unwieldy. One ambition, of course, is to have the free times, more times for discussion, where, in fact, Ideas are taken and followed and discussed. We've never achieved that in the Synod because the free times have been taken up with people making more speeches. Bonsoir à tous, bienvenue au cœur du Synode. La question, la question que tout le monde se pose, celle qui cristallise l'attention dans l'opinion, c'est celle évidemment des divorcés et remariés. Pour en parler, je vous propose un témoignage, un témoignage très touchant. C'est celui du cardinal Schönborn, archevêque de Vienne. Il est lui-même fils d'un couple divorcé. Je vous propose d'écouter son témoignage. N'oublions pas ceux qui sont bien plus Let's not forget the ones who suffer more than the divorce and remarried. Their children, that is to say, the children who have to go through their parents' divorce. I speak out of experience because I lived this when I was 13 years old, when my own parents separated. Once in school, a young person asked me what had been the most difficult moment in my life. Spontaneously, I answered that it was the day I found out my parents were getting a divorce. C'était le soir où j'ai appris que mes parents vont divorcer. There is nothing simple about the challenges to family life today, and that was evident from the wide range of topics raised inside the Synod. In Malaysia, the government is very pro-Islam, and there is a law. Any non-Muslim marries a Muslim, uh, that non-Muslim must become a Muslim. And so this is a problem, although I think that many of our Catholics who are caught in this situation still, do, still think that they are Catholics, they are not Muslims. One of the things we need to do is we need to listen uh, a lot to contemporary society. We need to be able to see what it is in society that uh, can be open to the church's teaching. Poverty is a big obstacle for Christians who would like to start a family. First of all, because they have no place to live. How can you start? Even the birds need a nest. And if you look nowadays in most of the places to buy a house, it's almost impossible for the poor. The topics that were discussed in the Synod, most of them were not so common in Iraq, but we have our own, like uh, emigration due to the sufferings of the conditions that are now in the country, especially during the last three months when the ISIS groups, terrorist groups, attacked Iraq and 100,000 people of Christian villages left their homes. We all know that family challenges exist. Therefore, to face the problems, we suggested the promotion of education and formation in the church. Formation in the church is very important. Concerning that formation, we encourage pre-marriage preparation. Also, there are participants here from mainland China, and they have shared their experiences with us. And we also shared our experiences with them, so that we can learn together. 
This week, we look at hotly debated topics at the Synod, the final report, and we find out why Paul VI is on the road to sainthood. This week, the general working sessions ended and the Synod participants started meeting in small groups. Just before that, though, the so-called midterm report was published, or the Relatio. It revealed that the bishops spoke quite openly about several issues, including people in same-sex relationships and how they can be valued and welcomed in parishes. Secular media proclaimed that the church is undergoing a drastic change in tone, finally opening to gays, and then certain bishops lambasted the Relator General for publishing the report and the other Synod members for even daring to discuss such topics. Well, that led to a couple interesting days of interviews and press briefings. Another point that came up, which was a sobering point, uh, one of the bishops said, we are not doctors who can heal every single disease or ailment. That, that means let's not become despairing or hopeless because we don't have the solutions to all of the problems that emerge, but we do have the language of mercy that can help people. In the small group discussions in week two, it became evident that most bishops wanted to preserve the strong pastoral tone that infused the discussions from week one. I can hear so many opinions, even contrasting opinions. They speak theologically, morally, according to the canon law. But for my people, this kind of theological reflection doesn't work too much. We had a huge number of people responding for, for our country, but 25% of the respondents were, were non-practicing Catholics. And the message was that it's impossible when we're told that because we're using contraception we're intrinsically evil, or that we're living in an irregular situation, that the language is so negative that it doesn't help us. So my intervention was let's not be concentrating on rules, but looking for language that helps people and encourages people in their journey to God. There's been a very strong tone of, of pastoral concern for people in difficult situations. Of course, it's not just about exceptions. We've got to also if, encourage people, normal Catholic parents and families who are living family life with its joys and struggles. So that needs to be endorsed big time. Let us not stereotype persons, countries, local churches. We are here, all of us are, have something to contribute, but all of us are also learners. On the last day of the Synod, the bishops voted on the final text. Pope Francis decided to publish it immediately. And then he addressed the bishops for the first time since the opening session. He spoke of the temptations that he witnessed among the bishops and gave a beautiful discourse on the role of the church today. It was followed by a four-minute standing ovation, an unprecedented occurrence in the history of the synods. Alcuni di voi possono chiedermi, ma padre, hanno litigato i padri? Ma non so se litigato. Ma che hanno parlato forte, sì, davvero. Eh? E questa è la libertà, è proprio la libertà che c'è nella Chiesa. Tutto è avvenuto con Petro e su Petro. E alla fine, con un mio intervento, ho dato una lettura sintetica dell'esperienza sinodale. Dunque, i documenti ufficiali usciti dal sinodo sono tre messaggio finale la relazione finale e il discorso finale del Papa non ce ne sono altri ora questo, questa relazione torna nelle chiese particolari e continua in quelle chiese il lavoro di preghiera riflessione e discussione fraterna al fine di preparare la prossima assemblea. Questo è il sinodo dei Vescovi.